A very big welcome to Goodison Park ahead of the game with Man United. 7 p.m. kickoff tonight. Bit of a weird one on a Sunday, isn't it? Have we all had our tea? No, not yet. Some people enjoying the chips. They smell absolutely delicious as well. I'll have to get some of those before I go in for the game. Uh, lots to come for you in the fan zone as ever. You're going to hear more from Mojo Circus. And this, of course, is our No Room for Racism fixture. Uh, as ever, Sarah Halpin as well. My friend is inside Goodison with some special guests tonight. Uh, let's cross over to Sarah, find out what she's got coming up to on the big screen. Thanks, Julia. I hope you're all enjoying yourselves there in the fan zone. I'm here pitch side for this one. Everton versus Manchester United. A late kick off today and we all know what it's like here under the lights at Goodison Park. Back to back wins for the Toffees. Really looking forward to hopefully, hopefully making it three on the bounce. But we've got a jam packed show coming up for you. We've got JJ Okocha. Hopefully we'll have Mason Holgate and much, much more. So stick with us and hope you're enjoying yourselves. Back to you guys there. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, some superstar guests there with Sarah tonight, pitch side. But don't worry, lots coming up for you actually in the fan zone as well. We're going to bring you the team news as ever first. As soon as we're allowed to, we will bring you the team news first on the big screen. So make sure you're here and make sure the lads can hear you, giving them a big cheer already. We've got Chris Beasley from the Liverpool Echo going to be on the stage as well, just chatting a bit more about this fixture ahead of kickoff. Uh, we'll be hearing from two fans as well. Sometimes you take it for granted, don't you, when you get to come to Goodison quite a lot, and it, you, know, you forget how lucky you are. These couple of fans have had to wait the entire pandemic to come to Goodison for the first time because they live in America and it kept being cancelled. So they finally, finally made it here. We're going to hear from them a little bit more from Mojo Circus. And I'm looking for some volunteers as well as we're going to be playing higher or lower as usual. Our quiz, it's your chance to win a stadium tour for two people here at Goodison Park. So you can either play on your own or you can play as a team, either or. So make sure you come and see me at some point in the fan zone, because later on, I'll need some contestants for higher or lower. I think I can see some people edging forward. Would you like to be one of my teams? For high Brilliant. I've got one team already for higher or lower. So I'm looking for somebody to take on that young man over there who already looks like he's in the zone, ready to win. So that'd be fantastic. Yeah, stick with us. We've got plenty to come as we count down to kick off against Man United. Everyone feeling confident tonight? Did you enjoy the Southampton win? I thought you might have done. Shall we see some highlights then of another time when we've beaten Man United? If you take a look at the big screen, I think you might enjoy this. Ronaldo again. Delivery in towards Rashford. Good save again, Jordan Pickford. That was a smart header from Rashford and an equally good save. Here's Anthony Gordon for Everton. Just too far ahead of Richarlison. He still has it, driven wide though. Richarlison. Pull back, Gordon will get a shot away, it's deflected in! Everton are in front! Anthony Gordon! What a big goal that could be! Everton's first real strike on target in the game. Their first effort on goal. It results in a... Effort finding the back of the nets. It's a big and all right. Pickford bangs that one long, brilliantly brought down by Richarlison. De Gea was off his line. Oh, and De Gea makes the save in the end as he was backpedalling. And the ball deflected up from Richarlison's shot. That was goal bound as well. Off Maguire and maybe Lindelof. And the touch from De Gea denies Everton a second. Maguire. He's given that to Everton. Gordon, well won back by Everton. Chance here for Everton. Cut back and cut out by Wambasaka. Before it was heading through to Richarlison. Tellez. There's the ball into the Everton penalty area. Headed down. Ronaldo. And Pickford, brilliant. An instinctive save from an instinctive shot too from Cristiano Ronaldo. Snapshot saved well by Jordan Pickford.
There you go, some highlights just to get us in the mood there. We're feeling confident then ahead of this 7 p.m. kickoff. There's someone there. Not You're nodding there, aren't you? You're feeling fairly confident. I like that. I like it when everyone's feeling quite up for this game. Uh, if you're free as well next Sunday, don't forget the WSL, the women are playing Chelsea 1 p.m. Walton Hall Park. So if you're around next Sunday, make sure you go to Walton Hall Park as well, looking for a third win in the WSL on the bounce as well are our women's team. Uh, right, let's cross back to Sarah inside Goodison because Sarah I believe you're with a couple of fans who've traveled quite a distance for today Sarah over to you thank you Julia and now I'm back pitch side and we've got two really really special guests with us today we've got Chris and we've got Max from the Chicago Evertonians now this is a lovely story actually so a couple of years ago about two and a half years ago now you guys were due to fly over here experience the Merseyside derby mm -hmm. everything that goes with it and unfortunately that's when Covid hit so that's you right. weren't able to make it two and a half years on you're here today for the game versus Manchester United how do you both feel starting with you Chris uh, I think it's an a absolutely amazing experience and it doesn't feel real right now because after two and a half years you don't feel like something's ever going to happen so it's that delayed gratification it's pretty wonderful it's exciting well we're so happy to have you here and Max I saw the video of you with the call with Mason Holgate you look a bit taller now than you did a couple of years ago you look a little bit older but what was it like to speak to Mason Holgate as well um, it was <laughs> it was quite wonderful um, being able to speak to such a player at such a high level of that sort and yeah he's a defender too right are you def yeah, you're a defender? I'm left back oh left back nice so you've got Michalenko to look to as yeah. well and players like that and you'll be right up close and personal with them today so are you excited for this game yeah yeah I think first we're... Premier League game to actually in stands first yeah. premier league game for both of you is that for right both of us yeah. yeah and it's manchester united so yeah. it's a it's a pretty tasty one of course they've got some huge players as well do you think the blues will come up on top today yeah hope they do we that's what we want to see isn't it 100 percent. and what have you guys been up to since you've been here were you at finch farm i believe we were yesterday? at finch farm yeah we got to go to finch farm uh had a tour of the facility it was great got to meet frank lampard which was wow. wonderful and he's an amazing guy and a wonderful person to get to talk to and then have been enjoying Liverpool the rest of the time and, and doing all the things that town has to offer so it's wonderful it's a brilliant city Liverpool I would say that but if you, you've been enjoying your time here definitely yeah you'll come back hopefully 100 percent. yeah definitely will. <laughs> yeah. I always say to our guests if we win then maybe you're good luck charm so maybe we'll have to just keep you here for, for a while and you know We'd keep coming to the games be entirely fine with that <laughs> uh, I'm down I could work from home so it's <laughs> fine if this is home <laughs> I've recruited some more absolutely love it and on Frank Lampard as well that must have been yeah. incredible meeting that man it was it was it was great and he was so generous with his time you want to say anything about yeah um he was not like he's a great coach and he was a great player he talked very well he wasn't uh, trying to rush us out or any of that sort he actually sat down had a chat with us very interesting most generous guy it was really great you know what? It's, it's so lovely to hear that from you guys because that's what we're all about at Everton is welcoming. We support your, you know, we appreciate your support from so far away. The passion and the sport to, to come here today and you know to back us through all this time is it's great and you know that's a, it's a great way to thank you. So I guess all I have to say is like, what, what you got predictions for the game? Do you think we are going to win? Like I said, I, I do. I, I have a, a good prediction. I'm thinking two one. You're hearing here right now, I and that feeling too, so. I feel like we're going to see DCL come in and, and score his first goal right there of the season. That'd be special for you to see DCL yep. come back and get a goal. Max, can we get a prediction from you today? Um, yes, the sort of the sorts, uh, three to one, uh, two to one. Yeah, I'm expecting a win today. As long as it's a win, hey, that's all. That's exactly. all that matters to us. <laughs> well, Chris, Max, thank you so much for being here today. It's really a pleasure to see you both, and I hope that Goodison delivers everything you want and more today. Thanks so, for having us. Thank you, pleasure. For Come Thank on, you. you blues, and Come back on, you to blues. you, Julia. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Weren't they brilliant, Chris and Max there? Right, they've given our score predictions, so I'm going to get some score predictions off you guys in the fan zone. Who wants to give me a score prediction? Your hands went straight up there. All right, they were feeling quite confident, weren't they? They've come all the way from America for today. Are you guys confident? 3-2. Three, 3-2 two. Three, two. Three, two as well. 2-1. 3-0. 
3-0, fantastic. And what about DCL being back? Who's your favourite player? Are you happy that he's back? Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy. And who's your favourite player? Uh, Seamus Coleman. Seamus Coleman. Let's give a cheer for Seamus Coleman. He had a great game last week, didn't he? Absolutely brilliant. All right, so you're all feeling fairly confident, aren't you? I like that. Anyone else feeling confident that wants to give us a team? Did you want to give us a team pr a prediction for today? How do you think it's going to go against United? 2-1. 2-1. And who do you think is going to score? Dominic Calvert-Lewin. A couple for Dominic Calvert-Lewin. That would be a brilliant way to welcome him back. Don't forget as well, we've got higher or lower a little bit later on in the fan zone. So I've already got one team. I think he's there. Are you? In fact, should we get your score prediction? What's your name, sir? Levi. Levi. And what are you going to play higher or lower a little bit later on? So you're up against this guy here who looks fairly good. I think you're going to be good at higher or lower. But what about score predicting? What do you think for today? 1-0 Everton. 1-0. Who's going to score that one goal? Calvert-Lewin. Calvert-Lewin. Do you know there's a lot of love for DCL, isn't there? Is everyone happy he's back? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Wouldn't it be ace if he would score today to signal that he was back as well? What about Connor Cody? Who's a Connor Cody fan in the fan zone? You are? Do you want to give me a score prediction then? You're a Connor Cody fan. What do you think for today? Are Everton going to beat Man United? Yeah, 1-0. One 1-0. Nil. One nil. Who's going to score? Um... Connor Cody. Connor Cody. If he's your favourite player, you've got to go with Connor Cody. I think so as well. He's, he's proving quite the hit already. Does anyone over here want to give me a, a score prediction? Do you want to give me one? Here we go. Let's come in here. You're wrapped up nice and warm. I'm quite jealous. In fact, have you had your tea yet? Because it's a weird kickoff, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. You're not, yeah. who do, what do you think is going to win today and who's going to score? Uh, Everton 2-0. Everton 2-0. I like that confidence. And who do you think might score? Uh, Ghana game. Well, I just like the fact you're thinking, do you want to give us a score prediction as well? No, she's gone shy. We won't do that. Okay, anyone else still want to give us a score prediction? There's a little hand gone up over there. Here we go. Oh, it's starting to rain, isn't it? Has everyone got hoods? All right, what's your name? Leighton. Leighton. Oh, are you la named after the Leighton? No. <laughs> I'm going to say you are. All right, then. What do you think today? What about score prediction? Four. Four nil. Oh, I love that confidence. And what do you think? Who's on the score sheet? Um. All of them. Gordon. Gordon's going to get four. I love it, Leighton. Brilliant. Right, I can bring your team news here now. So we're going to head over to the big screen. I want to hear a big cheer when I read out this team news now. Are we ready, fan zone? This is how the Blues are lining up. Number one, Jordan Pickford. Number two, James Tarkovsky. Number eight, Abadou Anana. Yeah. Number 10, Anthony Gordon. Yeah. Number 11, Damari Gray. Yeah. Number 17, Alex Awobi. Yeah. Number 19, Vitaly Mikalenko. Yeah. Number 20, Neil Mope. Yeah. Number 23, Seamus Coleman. Yeah. Number 27, Idrissa Garnagay. Yeah. And number 30, Connor Cody. There you go. That's the starting 11 today. And here are Frank Lampard's substitutions today. 15, Asmir Begovic. 5, Michael Keane. Number 7, Dwight McNeil. Number 9, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Number 26, Tom Davis. Number 29, Ruben Vinagre. Number 33, Solomon Rondon. Number 37, James Garner. And number 48, Kyle John. That's the Blues squad to take on United. Let's have a look. Oh, I like it. Here we go. This is how United are lining up. Number one, David De Gea. Number two, Victor Lindelof. Number six, Lissandro Martinez. Number eight, Bruno Fernandes. Number nine, Anthony Martial. Number 10, Marcus Rashford. Number 14, Christian Eriksen. Number 18, Casemiro. Number 20, Diogo Dallo. Number 21, Anthony. And number 23, Luke Shaw. That's United starting eleven. And here are Man United subs. Number 22, Tom Heaton. Number 7, Cristiano Ronaldo. Number 12, Tyrrell Malassa. Number 17, Fred. 19, Rafael Varane. 25, Jaden Sancho. 28, Facundo Palestri. Number 36, Anthony Alanga. And number 39, Scott McTominay. What do we think then? Are you still confident, fan zone? I think so. Nothing to worry about there at all. Uh, of course, we've been talking, haven't we, tonight, about this game being about no room for racism as well. Uh, this is really important. It's going on right across the Premier League, and we've got a bit more information on that for you right now.
does it mean to take the knee? Let's discuss some home truths. Racism isn't a comfortable conversation. But racism hasn't gone away. Racism is a real problem. It's societal. It's blatant prejudice. It's more than just social media abuse. It's certainly bigger than football. And this here is much more than just a gesture. It's about recognizing reality and demanding change. It's a symbol of pride, pride in identity, pride in using our platforms to change. That's what it means for players to take the lead. So if you're a supporter, support this. Yeah, that's a really important message that's going out right across the Premier League this weekend and next weekend as well. No room for racism in our game. All right, I know the spots of rain are coming down. Pop your hoods up and we're going to get ready for a boogie to try and keep you warm. Please welcome back to the stage the brilliant Mojo Circus. Circus there, let's hear it for them. Thanks a lot, guys. Absolutely fantastic. Love it when they're on in the fan zone. Uh, don't forget, coming up, we've got higher or lower. So I think we've definitely got one team, haven't we, over there? Levi, give us a wave. Did we have somebody else that wanted to play? I can't now remember. If not, I'll find somebody else. We'll find you an opposition. Higher or lower coming up and fan zone. You're going to have to help our contestants as well if the next card is higher or lower. Uh, I think we can go back to Sarah now, who's got another guest with her inside Goodison pitch side. Sarah, over to you. 
Yes, thanks, Julia. And I'm delighted to be joined by Ben Osu, who is head of equity and inclusion here at Everton Football Club. Ben, th- firstly, thank you so much for rejoining us here on Everton Live. Oh, it's nice to be back. <laughs> nine, nine months later, I think, yeah. Nine months yeah. later. I feel like you need a bit quicker time in between Ben Osu. That's my personal opinion. <laughs> He's such a laugh to have on. We'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. We'll get there, absolutely. We'll keep plugging away. Um, but Ben, today is our No Room for Racism fixture versus Manchester United to start with. And it's Black History Month as well. What is Black History Month and how important is it as a, as a football club that we, you know, get involved? Wider society, um, but then I think for the first time, you know, you you, you saw in in droves that that support um, and that support for anti-racism and for anti-racist campaigns, and you know, to say that this that this wasn't right. Um, I think you know, it has got better, but we know that it's it's still out there, and and those you know comments that you saw on Twitter or Instagram were were a representation of that. But I'd like to think that over the last few years. And obviously, you know, since what happened to George Floyd and the Black Lives Matter movement, um, we have seen more people stand up and and challenge it. Um, And that's always going to be a good thing, Um, no matter how big or small the challenge is, as long as it's being challenged, you know, that's 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 great. So for me, um, you know, yeah, we've still got that ugly side to to, you know, society. Uh, and some of it is represented within the game, mm-hmm. but we're starting to see the momentum build now for for people who you know have probably witnessed it for a while, but uh, you know are not ready to or are not going to stand up for it anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know today it's not you can't just be not racist. I think like you have to be actively anti-racist yeah, yeah. And, and call out things that you see or hear. And you know this is what No Room for Racism campaign is is a, you know about as well, isn't it? Is that we use our voices and, and combat it and fight against against racism yeah and look today is also the start of uh, national hate crime awareness week yeah. um and people would have seen in the news this week that you know hate crime statistics and reports have, have risen um race i think rose by about 30 odd percent uh sexuality rose by 20 odd percent um so we're still seeing you know reports coming through and incidents happen which is you know not great but uh, i think i suppose the the takeaway from that and the silver line and from that is that people are now starting to challenge it and they're starting to report incidents and i think you know I would never ask someone to, you know, to, to step up and, and, you know, wade in on some on, on an altercation or on, on something if they didn't feel confident enough to do it. But there's loads more ways that you can support someone or challenge it without kind of putting yourself in, in any kind of risk of danger. Yeah, absolutely. I think those are, that's absolutely sound advice as well. And we want to ask as well, of course, if anybody does, we, we, we'd hate to think of any racist abuse or anything like that happening at Goodison Park. If anybody here does experience, hear, see anything, then we'd like them to feel comfortable and, and reports so, and can you let everyone know how they would do that please? Yeah so there's a, a couple of methods so you can just email report it at evertonfc.com uh, and that'll come straight through to our stadium security team and they'll be able to follow it up and you can give as much information as, as you can. Uh, 
help to 60030 uh, and you can do that while you're at the game you can maybe give the seat number that you're at or, and just a little bit of information and then that'll go again straight directly to our stadium security team and they'll try and work out what's the best course of action to take at that moment in time yeah. if they can't do anything there and then then they'll follow it up after the game yeah that's brilliant so we obviously really you know suggest that people do do that we hope that nobody experiences that but that's what you do in case that does happen and Ben you've been absolutely fantastic it's fantastic to have you at the club you. I love having you on <laughs> event live I'd, you, I'd have you on absolutely every week we're going to end with a song let's show you we'll sing you out we'll play you out <laughs> Ooh, we're going to win that's give me the good vibes look he'll be on next time doing the show Ben Osu absolute legend thank you so much thank mate you. and back to you Julia we'll carry on singing <laughs> Sarah, they're having a good time inside Goodisman. Yeah, thanks to Ben as well there for just talking us a bit more about the No Room for Racism campaign. It's one of those things, isn't it? You hope we don't really need, but unfortunately we do, and I know you guys are all brilliant, so if you ever heard anything, I'm sure you would all speak out as well. Uh, coming up very soon, I've got my contestants now for higher or lower, so you're going to be helping them, Fan Zone, to let them know if the next cards are higher or lower, and the more help you can give them, the better, because I do have very young contestants this weekend as well let's get out my next guest though on the stage chris beasley from the liverpool echo joins us in the fan zone give him a big round of applause you all right there chris yeah at least i didn't get booed <laughs> no no only if you play for united will you yeah. get booed and you don't i can confirm that uh yeah so first of all uh, southampton win yeah. i think that showed the progress didn't it under frank lampard that going a goal behind yeah. And it didn't matter, did it? It all turned around very quickly. No, uh, myself and my colleague uh, Joe Thomas were down there at St Mary's. And, you know, maybe thought if that had happened last season, uh, it might have been game over for Everton. But it was totally different this time around that they were able to uh, more or less equalise straight away and then go on and get a very important away victory. Only the second Premier League away victory in the last 13 months. So hopefully that's something to build on and ahead of tonight's game. Uh, the lads are being com confident, uh, unbeaten in seven in all comps now. Yeah, I'm pleased for you and Joe as well because it's a long old trip yeah. that to Southampton, isn't yeah. it? If you don't come back with the three points. Uh, yeah, best defensive record as well in the league going into this weekend, Everton. Yeah. What has changed that? I think I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Is it fairly obvious? But what's changed? Yeah, of course. It's, it's that personnel, isn't it? They've got the new centre-back partnership there, James Sarkowski and Connor Cody. Um, it was interesting. It was amazing for the fact that Everton were actually able to do the Cody deal club captain at Wolves for the past five years, England international, and then the manager decides he didn't fancy him, and it was also the fact that they thought he couldn't play in the flat back four, Everton are now playing the flat back four, and he's, he's excelling <laughs> and he's the in that star. role. Yeah, so, so it made it incredible, obviously Seamus Coleman came back as well at Southampton, and it's been like he'd never been away, it was terrific, you know, obviously Nathan Patterson come on leaps and bounds the season, so could have been difficult for Seamus to come back in, but you know, it's like he'd always been there. Let's get your thoughts very quickly on the opposition for today because they don't have the best record recently against Everton. I think it's just yeah. one in seven matches against Everton in the league that United right. have actually won. Um, th the progress under the manager there has been a bit stop-start, hasn't it? I mean, I think everyone thought, oh, United have got it together and then they got absolutely <laughs> tanked in the, uh, in the Manchester derby yeah. last weekend. I mean, what are you expecting today? Yeah. It's almost to expect the unexpected. We kind of know what we're going to get with Everton. You know, it's going to be tight. All the matches have either been um, draws this season or there's just been one goal either way in them. Whereas United have kind of go one of two ways. You know, they lost 4 0 at Brentford, 6 3 at City, as you just mentioned a week ago. But then they've had victories as well against the likes of Liverpool and um, Arsenal as well. So. I think the crowd actually could play a big part tonight. Yeah, the home crowd hopefully gave me a get behind the boys and hopefully uh, that'll uh, see Everton over the line again. Well, they've been rowdy so far in this fan zone. So, yeah, I think it's going to be a loud one. Uh, very, very quickly before I let you go, quick word for Seamus Coleman coming back into the side. He's had a bit of a rotten time with injuries over a few months and getting himself right yeah. again. I tell you what, he was outstanding, though. He rolled back the years, didn't he, at Southampton? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, Frank Lampard said when Everton stayed up against Crystal Palace, he, he's the best man he's ever met in his life. And that's obviously Seamus the person. But as, as a player as well, I mean, he's 34 this month. He'd be determined to show that there's still plenty of miles on the clock for him. And uh, he'd be a proud man. He'd be, he would like to see Nathan's progress, but, you know, he, he's far from finished. Yeah, definitely. 34 is nothing. Absolutely nothing. Um, just very quickly, score prediction then and I'll let you go. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've said it once this, um, this week. Uh, I think a repeat of um, um, earlier this year, 1-0 uh, Everton. Brilliant. I think, would you take that fans out 1-0? 
Absolutely. Chris, I will let you get back inside for a bit of warmth before we kick off. Thanks so much. Chris Beasley there from The Echo. Thanks for joining us in the fan zone. Let's cross back to Sarah now. Coming up, we've got higher or lower in the fan zone, but Sarah has uh, a guest from the Netherlands Supporters Club. So over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Julia. Again, from pitch side here, and I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by Anton Brussen, who's from the Holland Everton Supporters Club, the Netherlands. Yeah, and you're Shevertonians. Shevertonians, exactly. <laughs> we got there in the end. And I've got my lovely scarf, so thank you so much for this. You're welcome. And we were just having a chat, actually, about an Everton women player, Katia Snoys, weren't we, who, yeah. who lived to, near where... The, the yeah, in Amstelveen, and she's growing up at St. Martinus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's a, a local club. And then she went, I don't know where she went, but uh, she went to, uh, she got a contract. Yeah. And got further on. And now she is uh, at Everton. Yeah, and it is for us great because she is the only Dutch uh, player uh, yeah, on the on the pitch. Absolutely. So. And she just played at Anfield in the week where we won 3 0 as well. So it was absolutely brilliant to see yep. that get a win over our, our rivals there. But Anton, you, you're no stranger to Goodison Park. Mm-hmm. How excited are you to be here today for this one? Yeah, it is great. It's uh, Manchester United, and I said as a joke, but it's the last match for uh, Tanag. Yeah. Because he, uh, they send him home after the, today. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You heard it here first. <laughs> so you confident then of, a, of an Everton? It be an Everton's night tonight. Yeah, the flow fun. where we are in, it's positive, and what Frank is doing with uh, with the team, it's unbelievable. The whole the whole technical team and, and uh, yeah there is there is on this moment there is we are in a positive flow and and i think they can uh, they can beat man united today yeah really let's hope so with yeah. this atmosphere as well obviously under the lights goodison park and night game it should be bouncing shouldn't it <laughs> something special is going to happen i can uh... <laughs> well anton's told us now something special is going to happen <laughs> now anton i wanted to ask you as well about you know being involved with the everton fans forum and how we can improve the official everton supporters club across europe across the world etc were you involved in these conversations yeah i'm involved in these conversations and it is i find it really positive because everton is really listening to what the supporters want what they feel how they are uh yeah, uh, how their experience is and, 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 and what they are doing and and that's for us important that we have a voice yeah. in the club and we don't think uh, all, all all the same yeah. but when we can uh, give our voice and, and say what we think, yeah, that's positive. Yeah, well, it's really important as well, isn't it, that you guys who are supporting from, you know, all over the Europe, all over the world, mm-hmm. um, that you feel that connection to the club and the club listen to how yeah. maybe things could be improved and, and vice versa, so you feel that's going well. Yeah, well, one, the first uh, meeting we have had, it was uh, around the Super League. Yes. Sir. And what Everton was asking us, it was for us really unbelievable. Mm-hmm. And when when uh, uh, Everton is a founder of uh, of the Premier League, yeah, we have to have uh, to 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 to, uh, to 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 give our uh, to give them our voice and to say how we think about it. And it is it is really really a negative thing that you that we give the room to 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 the Super League. Yeah, well, that's it exactly. And, and, and now it is. I hope it is gone. Yeah. Well, they listen. they throw it from the table. So so yeah. And that's what it's all about. Football without fans is nothing, as they say. And it's it's good that Everton value the fans and the voices yeah. of the fans. That yeah. makes you feel, you know, feel, feel good about what's going on. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. But I think Everton it really is is something different. What we see in or what we lost in the uh, lost in the Netherlands. Mm-hmm. You have to listen to your uh, to your uh, to your supporters. Yes, they are the club. Together with with uh, with the team on the pitch. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you think together we can get the win tonight? The players on the pitch and in the stands. Do you think it will be Everton's night tonight, then, Anton? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm convinced of that. Oh. You can count on me. <laughs> we can count on Anton to bring them positive vibes. Yeah. So thank you so much, Anton. I hope you enjoy the game. Up the this. toffees. Yeah. Up the toffees. Up the toffees. Up the toffees. Back to yeah. You, Julia. Come on. We grab them. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Anton, as well. Having a good time in Goodison. Thanks, everybody, for staying in the fan zone. I know it started to rain, but you're going to help our young contestants playing higher or lower. They've waited so patiently. So here we go. My contestant number one is Levi. How old are you, Levi? Eight. You're eight. And who was your favourite player again? Pickford. Jordan Pickford. All right. Are we all going to help Levi here with his cards? So you all have to shout higher or lower. Here we go.
All right, most Premier League starts for Everton. Stephen Pienaar made 171 Premier League starts. But Tim Cahill, what do we think? Higher or lower, fan zone? OK, Levi, what do you think? Higher. Higher, he agrees with you. This is on you guys. Here we go. Let's see, is Tim Cahill higher than 171? Brilliant. You've got a point on the board. Excellent. All right, Seamus Coleman. Oh, that's quite a tough one. More, most Premier League starts then. 210 for Tim Cahill. What do we reckon? Seamus, higher or lower, fan zone? Higher. Oh, you're playing against them. I wouldn't listen to them. Everybody else is saying higher. What do you think? Higher. Higher. All right. He, Levi says higher. So we need it to be higher than 210. Oh, there we go. 296. You got two points, Levi. Here we go. Tim Howard. Oh, that's a tricky one, isn't it? Shall I ask the fan zone? All right. What do you think, fan zone? Higher or lower for Tim Howard? He said, oh, is that your dad? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe go with your dad. <laughs> what do you think? Higher. Higher. All right. So we need Tim Howard to be higher than 296. Oh, yes. 354 league starts all right neville southall apparently he's here as well today i have been told somebody saw him wandering around neville southall so do we think fan zone what do we think that's that's difficult higher or lower than 354 league starts okay you're saying higher they're saying higher okay it's completely up to you though levi what do you think higher or lower higher all right he says higher let's see Oh, Premier, it's because it's Premier League starts. That was, oh, that was a tricky one, wasn't it? Right, you've still got three points on the board. Uh, two points on the board, sorry. All right, Duncan Ferguson, what do we think? Premier League starts, fan zone. Are we going higher or lower? It's tipping it down now, isn't it? Higher or lower? Higher. Saying lower. Your dad's saying lower. It's completely up to you, though, Levi. What do you think? Lower. You're saying lower for Duncan Ferguson. Let's have a look. Is it lower than 207? It is 162. Okay, then here we go. I think that was four right, I'm being told in my ear. Well done, Levi. All right, so you are in with a chance of winning a stadium tour for two people. If you go and stand back, yeah, put your hood up. Put your hood up. Your mum says, put your hood up. <laughs> uh, where are my other contestants? Noah and John. All right, come over here. You're going to go next. You've got four to beat. Levi was pretty good, wasn't he? Did I ask you who your favourite players were? Go on, tell me again. Anthony Gordon, Seamus Coleman. Oh, brilliant. I love those choices. All right, let's get, before we get soaked in the rain here, let's get your cards up on the board. And it's the same question. You're going to tell me if it's higher or lower. All right, most Premier League starts. Kevin Campbell is your starting card on 125. But do you think Mason Holgate is higher or lower? Fan zone, higher or lower? They're saying higher. Yeah, you're nodding. The guy's nodding over there. What do you think? Higher. You're saying higher. John and Noah say higher. Are they correct? Oh, 109. Don't worry, you've still got plenty of cards left. Here we go. Phil Neville. Do you think he's got more Premier League starts than Mason Holgate? What do you think? Fan zone, higher, lower? Lower. Low, oh, it's a real mix. Nobody knows. I think you're on your own on this one. What do you think? Uh, higher. What are you going to say? Higher. You're going to say higher than 109. Let's have a look. Yeah, 237, a lot higher. All right, Leon Osman. Oh, I think that's a tricky one, that. So, fan zone, what do you think? Are you putting Leon Osman higher than Phil Neville on Premier League starts? You're seeing lower. You don't know. Not a clue. You're leaving them on their own. What are you saying? Higher or lower? Okay, they're saying higher. It's all a bit split again. What do you think? Uh, I'm going to say higher because those people keep on making us say the wrong ones <laughs> so you're going the opposite way yeah. okay i like your tactic so you're saying higher yeah. 295 all right there we go let's have a look phil jagielka what do we think fan zone higher than 295 what are we saying 
These are tricky, I think, these ones. You're saying lower, you're saying higher. What do you say? They're saying, okay, lower over there, but it's completely up to you. The fan zone have been known to be wrong. Higher. Higher. Okay, Jack's higher. Let's have a look. Is he higher than Leon Osmond? Oh, just 303. Premier League starts. There we go. Leighton Baines. Total legend, Leighton Baines. Let's have a look then. What do we think? Fan zone higher or lower than 303? Oh my goodness me, you're loud. You don't need a microphone. <laughs> what do you think, guys? I can feel the tension. <laughs> this is just a guess, but higher? Higher. All right, we need Liam Baines to be higher than 303. Yeah. All right, we're in a tie-break situation as you've both got four. So I am being told we have got a tie-break question. So if you all come over here, here we go. We want the miles on foot, I'm being told, <laughs> between here and Old Trafford. Okay? I know none of you probably drive, so this might be a little tricky. Uh, Levi, I'll go with you first. How many miles do you think is between here and Old Trafford? You want John's 66. 66 for Levi. Okay, guys, what do you think? 69. 69. It is actually 31 miles, Levi. You have won a stadium tour. Give him a big round of applause. Noah and John, I've got a match day program for you. Here we go. Give Noah and John a round of applause. It was tight today, that game. And here you go, Levi. Here's your match day program. And a stadium tour for two people. Who are you going to take with you? My mum. Your mum. Oh, I love that. Give Levi a big round of applause. Thank you so much for playing, guys, in the fan zone. We'll see you very, very soon. Uh, yeah, it's a bit wet now, isn't it? I'm going to be really careful on here because it's gone a bit slippy. Uh, plenty of things to come up next time in the fan zone. So make sure you join us. Of course, that game against Palace on the 22nd of October. A fairly standard 3 p.m. kickoff. Let's hope it's a little bit drier as well. And don't forget Walton Hall Park next Sunday if you're free. Why not join us for the WSL game against Chelsea? That one is a one o'clock kickoff. Thanks so much for your company today in the fan zone. I know it's been a soggy one, but we will see you very soon. Make sure you're in fine voice when you're inside and sing the blues to three points against Man United. Take care. Bye-bye. Brilliant stuff. Thanks, Julia. And look who I've got with me now. Absolute legend of the game, JJ Okocha. JJ, thank you so much. How excited are you to be here today? Well, I'm delighted to be here. I mean, uh, it's great to come and watch Alex play live, uh, especially in a big game like today's game. So uh, I'm really looking forward to the game. I wish you could play for Everton today. I watched you lots of times growing up and you have all the tricks and all that flair. It's like your nephew, Alexander Awo. He has been superb, hasn't he, recently? Well, yes. I mean, uh, it's great to see him playing to his uh, potential, you know. special. But um, unfortunately, it took him a while, you know, to uh, settle down and also playing um, under a great manager that really wanted to improve his game and and has been playing him in his, in his right position I think that made a lot of difference well it's fantastic to see him because I can't remember seeing a player with such a huge turnaround you know last season he was playing right wing back a lot under Frank Lampard now we're seeing him more of a central midfield position where he's really flourishing do you think that's where we will get the best football out of Alex well, yes. I mean, uh, I've always said to him that he's too honest a player, you know, um, because I was surprised when he was uh, playing at the right wing back, and, and, and it shows that he was willing to sacrifice for for the team. And of course, he was affecting his personal goals and his performances, you know. But um, finally, I'm glad that he's playing in his natural position where he can get on the ball 
and make things happen and I think Everton are enjoying the best of him now uh, and we're all delighted that he's playing well. We're delighted. I keep laughing with fans saying let's build a statue for Iwobi because <laughs> he's been absolutely fantastic. Another assist on the weekend against Southampton. Do you think he would love to add a couple of goals uh, to his game as well? He's getting everything else, maybe a couple of goals in there as well. Well, yes, I mean, uh, that's maybe the bit that is missing, you know, but uh, as long as he keep providing for the other players, I think uh, that's good as well, you know, but um, I'm delighted that he's such a team player that he's flourishing, you know, for the team and not, not for himself, you know, he's unselfish and I think uh, that's the kind of player that uh, maybe ever to need at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. And you said it all there, you know, he's very selfless. He's a selfless player. He does everything that he can to do the best by the team, as you said, playing in all kinds of different positions as well. So it's great to see him in the position that he prefers. And Frank Lampard, I want to talk to you about him because obviously you came up against him as a player a few times. What was it like to play against Frank Lampard? I mean, he was a great player, such a great player. And his record speaks for himself, you know. Uh, it was a delight to have played against him and, and also to watch him play. And I'm, I'm so happy that as a manager, you know, he's passing on his football knowledge to the young ones. And I'm not surprised that he's doing well as a manager. Yeah, he's a great guy. And I think you can see the way the team is developing as well. And what I want to talk to you about the Super Eagles, Nigeria as well, your country, Alex's country. You both, so you know, you're a massive, massive player for them. Alex, do you see a big future for him? He's a real superstar for that Nigeria side, isn't he? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, he has took, taken on the baton and, and he's running yeah. with it, you know. Unfortunately, we are not going to be at the World Cup, but he's made a great impact and, and he has imposed himself in the team as well. And, and we love him uh, playing for the uh, Super Eagles. So I, I think the future looks bright because we've got uh, players like him now bringing back their experiences in, in Europe back home, you know, and that's what we want in the national team. That's what we want to see. We've had some great Nigerian players at Everton as well over the years. Um, Joseph Yobo as well. I absolutely loved him, defender. So it's great to see. And as you say, it's disappointing that Nigeria will miss out, miss out on the World Cup. But going forward, I think, you know, Alex Iwobi will be a fantastic player, not only for Everton, but for the Super Eagles as oh, well. Oh, definitely. And we have to thank Everton for his development, you know. I think all his improvement and all his good work uh, we are benefiting from as Nigerians. So. I would say thank you to everybody. Oh well, we we thank you know you guys and you know his family, friends, everyone that's kept him his his head level because it was a tough time for everybody last year. Um, but to see how much Awobi has flourished and grown and just such a really lovely lad as well, a really really great person. He and is he yeah. is down to earth. I mean, um, you, you can't expect a player to be to give more than what he gives. You know whether it's going well for him or not. You, you can be guaranteed that he will put sweat on his jersey, you know, and that's what you want from a player to give 100% at any given time, whether um, the team wins or not, you know, that's for me the minimum requirement and, and he's such a player that gives that every time. He does. He gives blood, sweat and tears for this shirt and we just absolutely love him. JJ, that's all we've got time for. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a real pleasure to speak to you. Pleasure too. Pleasure to be and here. And hopefully a win for, uh, for Everton and a goal for Alex as well yeah. today. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now we hear from the manager, Frank Lampard. Frank, I'm beaten in six Premier League games, tightest defence in the Premier League right now. These are sound foundations to build on, aren't they? They are. I don't like talking about them. Um, we just have to keep doing the right actions. Uh, it's a tough league, so to, to keep the well, not clean sheets, but to keep those those goals against down is a good thing. It's an improvement. We've got to keep working on that all the time. But uh, yeah, it's good. We're in we're in good form. I suppose we should be confident. You've got to take that, enjoy those moments where you feel like you're playing well. But today is a big test for us against a, a really strong opposition. Just the one change. Anthony Gordon comes back in. 
Very important because he adds a bit of unpredictability to the side, doesn't he? Yeah, Anthony, we know Anthony brings. I've got options in the wide areas. Dwight comes in and scores. His first goal was delighted for him. But yeah, with Anthony, he's uh, dynamic, he's quick. You know, he gives, he gives a lot, particularly games at Goodison last year. It was brilliant for us in terms of injecting the crowd into the game and all those sort of things. So important that he, he can bring that. And good, no, good news for Everton fans. Dominic Cavalier on the be- bench. You've been yeah. waiting for that for a long time. Yeah, pleased to have him back involved. This. Uh, a bit frustrating, obviously, for him more than anybody because he's desperate to be involved and, and show what he can do. So we've got him there. It's nice. Um, match fitness probably short of, but can he impact a game for a period of time? We'll see. Manchester United have had an, an interesting week. Long journey as well. Mm. Perfect opportunity to catch them under the goodness and lights. I don't know. We, we focus on ourselves and probably just understand that they've got great individuals in their team, a really strong squad. So I wouldn't go that far. We can focus on the, the atmosphere that will be there. We felt that already on the way in. Um, focus on ourselves and re- respect the fact that they've got good individuals, but believe in ourselves. So there's Frank Lampard ahead of this one. And look who's joined me. It's only Mason Holgate. <laughs> Mason, thank you so much. Um, how are you getting on to start with? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Um, I trained yesterday. Obviously, it was just a light session the day before the game, so hopefully I'll get another week of training in and I should be um, available to be in the squad next week, hopefully. That, that's brilliant news, because obviously the Brentford game, I believe it was, wasn't it, when you yeah. got injured? And you'd had such a great start to the season. You were playing really well, really consistently, really confidently, so it must have been quite a tricky time for that injury to hit. Yeah, obviously, it's the ideal of it. Not the, the timing of it wasn't ideal, but yeah. you never... It, you could always have an argument whenever you get injured it's going to be a bad timing but it's part of football um, got on, got, just have to get on with it and hopefully come back stronger and better but the team's doing well and it's, it's been good to watch the boys and, and start to give results up Absolutely that's back to back wins now as well at this point Evan currently have the best defensive record in the league which obviously you contribute to that's a nice little uh, label to have as well I know it's not necessarily going to last for the whole season but for right now it shows how solid we are yeah it's a, it's a, it's a great statistic to show where we're, we're, what we're trying to do but it's not just us I don't think as a defence I think the whole team's working towards pressing from the front and, and setting traps and stuff and it's starting to show obviously with numbers of not conceding goals which is a positive for us yeah it is and you know obviously there's been some decisions and things like that in games this season maybe the derby I felt we could have nicked that Damari's offside at Leeds and we find ourselves at a decent sort of place now but two wins on the bounce we'd love to make it a third today wouldn't we but it'll be a tough game today against you yeah I think um, even at the start of the season obviously when results weren't going our way I think you could look at like the Chelsea game yeah. um, and the Forest game and things like that and they were, they were, they were, I always felt like once a little bit of luck came our way the results would come because the performances were there and over the last few weeks they've been coming and that's that's great for us it's great for confidence and it's great for the feel around the place and and like like I said obviously these are a very good team it's going to be a difficult game but I think with the way that the boys are playing and at home there's every chance that we can go and get the win and the result that we want. Definitely, and you know, Mason, more than anyone, what it, what this is like. I, I'd love to know how it feels to play on this pitch when it's bouncing, the coach welcomes, the smoke flares, everything like that. What what was that like towards the tail end of last season as well? Obviously, we beat these towards the end of last yeah, season as well. Yeah, um, it was massive. I think we, we, we've said all along from last season that how big of a part the fans played. It was, it was huge and it, it gave us the lift that we needed to just get over the line in the end, which were a big relief for us all um, and that were definitely a huge part down to the fans I think if you look at the home games like especially the Crystal Palace one it, we never died we never quit and it, it, it gave us that kick and definitely the fans helped us do that I'll be honest with you Mason I watched that back last night like randomly <laughs> my sister was around and I was like let's watch a bit of the Palace game again just because it gives you goosebumps obviously a bit less pressure on us today but equally you know for different reasons we want to build don't we we want to keep climbing that table yeah I think if you look at the squad that we've got and the team that we've got it's we've, we know how far we can go um, obviously these are the games that test us more what, we want to be consistently picking points up and if we, we're the team that we think we are and we think how good we are uh, we definitely cause teams like this problems and I don't think anybody really wants to come come and play against a team of our uh, energy and the way that we play and obviously with the fans in the stadium it's never a nice game to come out uh, the weather's not bad and well, the weather's not good and stuff like that so it's, it's not going to be a nice game for them and I, hopefully we can make it even less nice for them by staying on that's what we want we want this place to be horrible for teams to come and play absolutely make Goodison nasty make it horrible to play and just quickly as well and James and Connor Cody as well coming in they've done so well but does that make you feel good to know that whilst you have been injured we've been in safe hands but you want to get back in there as well don't you yeah like- yeah definitely obviously Codes and uh, Taki have brought in a, a massive amount of 
of experience and, and, and leadership into the team. I think it's quite clear to see that. But um, yeah, like you said, it, obviously playing with them, I knew exactly how good we are and that we were in safe hands. Um, and hopefully I can come back in and, and help the team the way I, I can individually. But support and they're obviously doing well so it's going to be hard to, to get back in but that's a part of the, the challenge I think. That's what you that's what you want I guess and yeah. uh, you know we, we look forward to seeing you back out there in Royal Blue Mason you've been missed and as thank I said you. fantastic start to the season so thank best you. of luck with that and thank you for joining us as well no worries. it's a real pleasure no, so I didn't quite get the umbrella like JJ Okocha but yeah listen <laughs> you got it you got to get a few more apps in there now you got <laughs> we'll make sure that's sorted we'll have a word with our, our four manager Dan there but that's been Mason Holgate delightful to speak to him now all that's left to say is come on you blues we'll see you next time on Everton Live